buffers don't have an unlimited ability to resist the addition of strong acid or base. At some point, strong acid or base will overwhelm the acid, weak acid, or conjugate base in the buffer and cause a very large change in pH. We can quantify the ability of a buffer to resist changes in pH through a quantity known as buffer capacity. And qualitatively speaking, the larger this is, the better the buffer is at resisting changes in pH. Quantitatively, we can think of it as the amount of strong acid or base that must be added to change the pH of a buffer by one unit. So this is a definition of buffer capacity that gives us a sense of how many moles of strong acid or base it really takes to kind of overwhelm the buffer by pushing the pH to plus or minus one unit. And we can define it for both acid and base, depending on whether we're thinking about adding hydroxide or adding hydronium. And to give us a sense of what these definitions really mean, let's return to this graph of the concentration of weak acid and conjugate base as a function of pH. The buffer region is at the center of this graph, and the ideal buffer has equal concentrations of HA and A minus. We can think of the buffer capacity as the slopes of these curves, since added hydronium or hydroxide will alter the concentrations of HA and A minus, and the pH is on the x-axis, this resembles rise over run, right? We can think of the slope as the capacity of the buffer, and the steeper that slope, the greater the buffer capacity. Now, the ideal buffer is right at the center of this curve. As we move to one side or the other, adding more conjugate base or adding more acid, the buffer capacity of either acid or base is going to go down, and, and overall, the buffer just gets less effective at resisting acid and base overall. Eventually, we reach a point where the buffer is not a buffer at all, and it's these locations highlighted in brown where we have a very large amount of either HA or A- present in the solution. At these pHs, we've got so little of the conjugate acid or its conjugate base that we're not really dealing with a buffer. And the ideal range for a buffer, as we'll touch on here shortly, is within plus or minus one pH unit of the pKa of the conjugate acid in the buffer. So we already touched on this idea that there are distinct values for buffer capacity for acid and base when HA and A minus are not equal to each other. And generally speaking, and this is echoed by the second bullet point on the slide, greater concentration means a greater buffer capacity. So for example, a buffer with two molar HA and A minus has better buffer capacity than a buffer with only one molar of the weak acid in its conjugate base. Now let's think about Let's say we had a target pH in mind for a buffer system. How do we decide what acid and conjugate base to use to achieve that target pH? Well, the first principle relies on this idea that we've seen that to really be a buffer, the solution needs to contain a 1 to 10 or 10 to 1 or somewhere in between ratio of the acid and its conjugate base, the weak acid and conjugate base. So they've got to be approximately equal within one order of magnitude, no more than 10 to 1 and no less than 1 to 10. If we need a buffer with an acidic pH, we should choose a conjugate acid whose pKa is less than 7 and is close within one pH unit of our target pH. So a weak acid HA whose pKa is less than 7 is ideal. If we want a buffer whose pH is greater than 7, well then we should think about a conjugate acid in the buffer with a pKa greater than 7 and a weak base B. So we could think about it as the pKa of HB plus is greater than 7 or the pKb of B is less than 7. By the conjugate seesaw, that's actually two different ways of saying the same thing. As an example, let's take a look at this curve on the right, which shows the pH of an acetic acid solution as we add sodium hydroxide to it. This is the beginnings of a titration curve, which we'll revisit in more detail in a future section. So this is acetic acid, and as we add sodium hydroxide to this, the acetic acid will react with the hydroxide in a proton transfer process to produce acetate. So we start building in a mixture of the weak acid and its conjugate base as we add sodium hydroxide to this thing. 
Where we're starting here actually is with a one-to-one -one mixture of A minus to HA. So it's where we're starting is not an acetic acid solution, but a perfect or ideal buffer with A minus and HA equal in concentration. And the pH of this solution is 4.74. As we add sodium hydroxide, we see the buffer in action with the pH not going up very much in this initial region of the curve. It looks roughly linear or, or so, in fact, and relatively flat. pH isn't changing much as we add that strong base hydroxide. But right about where the acetic acid concentration becomes 11% of the acetate concentration, right about here, there's a definite qualitative change in the steepness of this curve. It starts getting much, much steeper and extremely steep off to the right. And at this point, we say the buffer is broken. There's so little acetic acid left, there's so little HA left, that we're essentially unable to maintain the buffer action. We lose this ability to take advantage of equilibrium, as we've seen previously, and the pH increases rapidly now as we add sodium hydroxide. And in fact, if you think about going in the opposite direction, from right to left on this curve, adding hydronium would actually decrease the pH rapidly within this region. So buffering action is broken both ways. So this 11% figure is, is interesting. It essentially means that once our ratio of HA to A minus is less than 0.1, right, then we've essentially broken the buffer. We're in this orange highlighted region at that point. And this applies regardless of the identity of the weak acid and conjugate base. It's a general principle for buffers. And the upshot of this for choosing the right buffer for the job and designing a buffer system at a target pH is that the target pH must be within plus or minus one unit of the pKa of HA if we're using a weak acid or the pKa of HB plus if we're using a weak base B. We have to choose the weak acid or weak base such that the target pH is within plus or minus pH unit of the pKa of the acid involved in the conjugate pair. This is our guiding light for designing buffer solutions.